patch 0.18 has rebalanced the entire game, from items and crests to every single hero. I've already covered the item changes in another video, which you can watch after this one, but for today, I'm going to focus on the balance changes to individual heroes. Because each hero received an average of around 20 changes, I'm going to display all the changes on screen while briefly recapping each hero. At the end of each recap, I'll talk about whether or not I believe the hero received a buff, nerf, or just a tweak when compared to the previous patch. As always, I'll provide a tier list recap at the end of each section. Quick disclaimer about the tier list though. Since the patch is releasing today and I've yet to have a chance to play it as of recording, they are extremely subject to change, so get subscribed for when I put out the tier list refresher in a few weeks. Almost universally, heroes have received buffs to their early game power and health, but lower scaling and resistances across the board, so I won't be detailing those with each hero. Now moving on to the carries. I believe we could see a shift in prominence of several carries this patch. With crit chance being changed from 25% to 20% on each item, it'll also delay how long before crit builds come online by a little bit. Drongo was in the middle of the pack in our previous list, and received a decent set of changes in patch 0.18. Drongo's passive damage has been lowered a little bit to both enemy heroes and monsters, while his abilities have gained higher base damage at the cost of lower physical power scaling. The only ability that breaks this trend is Drongo's alternate ability, which receives higher base damage and higher scaling. Drongo is usually weaker in the early game in most matchups, so with these changes to that, I see him receiving a buff overall. Grim.exe is next on the list, receiving some extensive changes to his hitbox and abilities. Grim received another buff to his movement speed. Like others, he also received some base damage increases across his kit while losing some scaling. The biggest change to him though is that his model and hitbox have been reduced in size. The model and hitbox height have been lowered by 10%, while the radius of his hitbox has been lowered by 30%. This will give him a lot more breathing room when facing off against enemies, and is a counterintuitively huge buff for him overall. Kira received a mixed bag of changes this patch, with her primary receiving the expected base power increase while losing some scaling. However, her alternate ability is losing some base power while gaining 50 units of additional range, and a 5% increase in scaling at every level. Her ultimate has had its damage increased while lowering the on-hit modifier by 5%, and increasing the amount of damage the ability does to minions. With these changes, I believe Kira will perform slightly better in teamfights where she can deal damage to multiple targets, but weaker in her early game where she relies more on Mercy to poke. So this is just a slight tweak for Kira. Murdoch is a different story though, with the Lawbringer Sniper only receiving buffs across all of his abilities. His passive physical pen has been increased by 5%, and his traps, buckshot, and long arm of the law receive damage increases both on their base damage as well as their physical power scaling across the board. This will help Murdoch stack up better into competition and may warrant him a position change in the tier list. Next is Revenant, who has really been hit and miss recently. The bounty hunter receives more physical power from his passive, but loses some of the amplification he gets from building crit chance. Obliterate received better base damage with worse scaling, while Scar gains significantly more damage early with the increase tapering off a little bit at higher levels. In addition, Scar also receives buffs to its scaling with both physical power and magical power. Rev's Hellfire rounds have a little more bite early game, as well with the missing health damage being increased, while losing some scaling per level. All in all, with the buffs to Revenant's early game, I think he'll be a stronger contender for the duo lane. Sparrow received the most volatile changes in the carry roll this patch with her passive being nerfed twice by reducing the max health damage, as well as the duration of each stack. However, her Hail of Arrows increased quite significantly at all levels, including its physical power scaling. Piercing Shot also receives a base damage increase, making it less reliant on building stacks before firing. It will, however, be weaker late game since its scaling has been reduced across the board. Her ultimate now gives additional physical power at each level, but will have a longer cooldown on its first two levels. I think these tweaks to Sparrow will weaken her for high skill players, but bring up her win rate for newer ones. Twin Blast was our OP tier hero last patch, and I think with these changes we could see him fall out of that position. His abilities have received the standard base damage increase while losing some scaling, however he also received early game cooldown nerfs to both Vaporize and his Vortex Grenade, meaning he won't be able to dominate the lane as consistently from minute 1. Ventilate did see an increase in damage per bullet and a reduced cooldown, but was nerfed in every other way meaning Twin Blast has received net nerfs this time around. Our final carry is Wraith, who didn't receive anything drastic outside of the base damage increases and scaling nerfs. The only real change worth noting is that his passive wards will now grant more gold and XP to anyone who kills them. Overall, I believe Wraith will be counted as a tweak this patch. For our carry tier list, we see a bunch of heroes moving out of their previous place and usually into a higher one, with Revenant, Sparrow, and Murdoch all moving up a tier. 
Twin Blast has been dethroned from the OP tier and for right now won't be replaced by anyone. I do have my eye on Drongo though, as I think with his damage buffs, long silence, and new carry items, he could be a great contender for the OP tier next time around. Supports have not only been given some great new items, but also received many buffs as well. Decker hasn't been played quite as often, even with her relatively consistent CC throughout her kit. Ometa has shown her some love though by increasing her base damage on almost every ability and lowering their mana costs. Her primary ability, Photon Disruptor, has received an increased slow effect, but it won't last as long. In addition, her passive rocket boots will have a longer cooldown in the early game, but she can jump for joy all the same by the end. Overall, some pretty good buffs for Decker. Lieutenant Bellica has received some of the carry treatment in patch 0.18, with her abilities gaining higher base damage but losing quite a bit of scaling throughout. In addition, her mana costs have been decreased at most points throughout the game, but she won't be able to gain as much mana back from her Void Bomb. Her Neural Disruptor also received a buff to its base damage and the amount of extra damage it deals when enemies are missing mana. With these changes, I believe these Bellica buffs will have a better time in the early game even if she loses some power later on. Muriel has been struggling to get played in the higher skill matches. She received almost universal buffs getting her damage or shields increased across the board. Her only real nerfs are to the damage multiplier of Serenity and the slight magical power scaling decrease on her ultimate. Otherwise, Ometa smiled upon Muriel this patch with some pretty massive buffs. Narbash received some great buffs this patch as well, allowing him to not only deal more damage, but also heal his allies for even more. Narbash's cleave has been buffed from 20% to 25% of his damage. In addition, Thunk and Crash Bang Boom received base damage increases as well as a magical power scaling increase on his ultimate. Song of My People got double buffed as well by increasing its base healing as well as the amount of extra healing you get per stack of Narbash's passive. Overall, pretty great buffs for the Jolly Green Ogre. Baze is next with a, quite a list of changes. Her passive healing was increased slightly from 10 to 12, as well as receiving a magical power scaling increase. Psychic Flare has had its damage increased across the board, while her base damage from Energy Lance was lowered at every level. They did make up for that loss a little bit by increasing the bonus damage and scaling of her Lance. Baze's Link won't provide as much power anymore, but will be off cooldown slightly more often by the late game. Her ultimate, Hyperflux, also received some slight buffs as well at each level. All in all, I believe Faze will come out this patch relatively unchanged as she only received some minor tweaks to each ability. Last up for the core support is Richter. Richter's ability changes focus on increasing his crowd control and damage output, with increased base damage on his electrocute and shock therapy, enhancing his utility in teamfights. While adjustments to his ultimate, Skewer, boost its damage, further solidifying his presence as a formidable tank and initiator. Even though some of the other supports receive more meaningful buffs than Richter, I do think these will help him stay a cut above the rest. The support tier list will see a little bit of movement with FaZe, Decker, and Muriel all moving up a tier. In addition, Richter will move up to the S tier to join Steel, who remains in the S tier due to his ability to control a lane even as a support. Elika is remaining the only hero in the OP tier for the beginning of this patch while we wait to see how things roll out with the new support items. Mid lane may not have received a ton of new items, but they sure did get a few spicy changes that'll shake up the tier list. Kicking off the mid lane is Argus. Argus's kit has been refined for more immediate impact and engagements. His primary ability, Dread Nova, and secondary, Aether Crystal, both see substantial increases in base damage, though at the cost of reduced magical power scaling. This adjustment shifts his effectiveness towards earlier game phases, while his ultimate Synaptic Obliterator now does more damage, bouldering his late game execution potential despite reduced scaling on his passive and other abilities. Ometa seems to be trying to give Argus a more defined pattern of aggression at varying stages of the game, so I see this as tweaks toward that end. Countess's abilities have been tuned for more consistent damage output and utility. Her primary, Shadow Slip, and secondary, Eventide, both feature increased damage and lower mana costs, enhancing her mobility and burst potential. Blade Siphon now deals more damage and heals more, while also having a reduced cooldown, significantly increasing her sustainability in fights. Her ultimate, Feast, has increased damage output but reduced max health damage scaling, focusing her more on executing weakened targets. This is clearly a net buff for Countess. Being able to use her abilities more often and for their intended purposes is a great change. Gadget's kit has been adjusted to provide more immediate area control and damage. Sticky Mine and Seek and Destroy now deal more damage, making her a threat in grouped encounters, and giving her more ability to trade in lane with the poke heavy mid lanes we're used to seeing a lot prior to this patch. However, increased cooldowns and lower damage on her Tesla Dome demand more strategic placement and timing to be successful. I think these changes will help push Gadget in a better direction and result in a net buff for her. Gideon's abilities have been geared towards increasing his burst potential in teamfights. Cosmic Rift and Black Hole both see notable increases in damage, 
enabling him to contribute significantly to team damage output. These changes reinforce his role as a high-impact mage in team settings. His passive, Cosmic Power, also saw an increase in damage, letting him stay close to enemies more effectively. But for that, we'll see a cooldown increase as well. Great buffs for Gideon altogether that should help him stay a cut above the rest in the mid lane. Halberdzard's abilities have been adjusted for increased effectiveness in zoning and crowd control. The base damage of his R2000 missile and landmine has been significantly increased, enhancing his poke and area denial capabilities. However, the scaling on these abilities has been reduced, emphasizing a stronger early to mid game presence over late game power. Make It Rain also sees a decent damage increase that should help Howitzer secure more kills instead of letting his enemies run away with the very little health left. Another set of good buffs for Howitzer. Iggy and Scorch see a shift towards more potent area control and damage over time. Flame Turret and Oil Spill now deal more damage, with adjustments to health and armor scaling to maintain durability and prolonged engagements. Their ultimate, Inferno, also sees a rise in initial and residual fire damage, reinforcing the role as an area denial specialist in teamfights. Iggy's needed to see some meaningful change for a little while, and while his abilities did see some improvement, his turret's health and armor change were a net nerf, which could result in Iggy staying in a similar place this patch. Moragesh's adjustments enhance her role as a relentless pursuer with increased damage on her primary, Hive, and secondary, Swarm, boosting her burst potential. Her ultimate, Curse, now deals more damage and has reduced cooldowns, reinforcing her ability to finish off targets efficiently. Strong buffs to Moragesh overall that could lead to an increased play and win rate in the mid lane. The Fae receives several changes aimed at increasing her area control and damage. Her primary, Bramble Patch, and secondary, Harvest Nettles, see increased damage, enhancing her lane harassment and teamfight presence. With solid improvements to the Fae's damage and reductions in her mana costs, these net buffs solidify her role as a potent control mage in various combat scenarios. Mid lane sees Gideon return back to the S tier this time around. Grim, Countess, and Moragesh are all moving up to the A tier as well. Finally, Bellica is being dethroned from the OP tier this patch, as with the new items and other changes, I expect her to fall out of favor a little bit compared to the rest of the mid lane roster. The jungle will be a wild ride this patch, with many of the heroes and items taken by junglers being dramatically changed, opening up a plethora of new options. Crunch's modifications enhance his role as a durable fighter with powerful combos. His passive and primary ability, Left Crunch, now have increased damage, supporting his burst capacity. Notably, his ultimate, Recrunch, not only deals more damage, but also heals more, allowing him to sustain longer in these brawls. These changes make him a formidable presence in sustained engagements. These tweaks, along with some of the fighter item additions and changes, mean Crunch will undoubtedly be a formidable force throughout this patch. Significant boosts to Feng Mao's abilities make him a more potent solo combatant in both the jungle and the offlane. His primary, Safeguard, and ultimate, Earth Shatter, now offer increased shielding and damage respectively with the latter also having an increased execute threshold. These enhancements allow him to be more aggressive in initiating fights and securing kills. All in all, Feng Mao received some strong buffs that will allow him to rise through the ranks in the jungle role. Kalari's adjustments focus on enhancing her assassination capabilities with increased damage on her secondary, deathmark, and alternate, crippling dagger, both receiving boosts in damage and scaling. Her ultimate, guillotine, now deals more initial damage, emphasizing her role as a finisher in fights although the overall cooldown has increased, requiring more decisive use. Even before these buffs, Kalari was starting to gain more prominence and favor among players last patch, making me reconsider her C tier position. Chimera's enhancements are geared towards improving his sustainability and burst potential in skirmishes. His passive, Spirit Regeneration, now provides more health regen, and his primary, Unleash, features increased scaling for more impactful strikes. The adjustments to Ambush, including increased damage and a higher slow, bolster his chasing and engagement efficacy. With Chimera receiving almost universal buffs this patch, I believe he's going to remain a dominant force in the jungle. While he didn't receive a ton of changes, Rampage's abilities have been fine-tuned to bolster his tankiness and engagement capabilities. His primary, Boulder Throw, now deals more damage, reinforcing his role as a disruptor in fights. Notably, his ultimate, Behemoth, has adjusted health scaling, emphasizing his transformation into a formidable force during critical team clashes. Overall, these tweaks will keep Rampage a good choice for the jungle role, but he may slip a little in rankings since he didn't get as many positive changes compared to the others. Serith receives several adjustments aimed at enhancing her burst and sustain in combat. Increases in her base damage for Ascend and her ultimate Heresy improve her aerial and finishing strikes. The changes are designed to bolster her ability to deal and sustain damage in prolonged fights. Serith's early game buffs and cooldowns and damage will allow her to gank a little bit faster, which can help her start her snowball a little bit better which will help offset some of the late game scaling nerfs she received. For the jungle tier list, most of the roster has seen a position change, 
with Countess being the only hero at lower tiers to stay put due to her doing less damage to jungle minions overall. Otherwise, Kalari, Serith, Crunch, and Grux all move up one tier. Rampage, having not received as much benefit this patch as others, will be falling out of the OP tier and into the S tier. With itemization all over the place for jungle heroes especially, this is the tier list I'm the least confident in, but will be excited to revisit in a few weeks. Offlane saw some more mild changes, but still receives a general increase in damage and scalability in the early game, hopefully meaning the lane can bring more impact to the later portions of the match. Greystone's adjustments focus on enhancing his resilience and damage in prolonged fights, with his basic abilities receiving more damage with the Assault the Gates losing some scaling. His ultimate, Stoneforged Soul, now provides more damage and better scaling, ensuring he remains a threat even after reviving. This solidifies his role as a persistent frontline fighter in skirmishes and team engagements, and it'll keep him as a great option for new players looking to get the hang of the offlane. Grux receives some buffs that boost both his damage output and survivability, but some nerfs in cooldowns and mana costs. Key abilities like Smash and Grab and Double Pain have seen increases in base damage, and his ultimate, Warlord's Challenge, now steals more physical power. These improvements, coupled with a slight increase in cooldowns, align to make Grux a more formidable initiator and sustained fighter in the thick of battle while making him choose his fights a little more carefully. Overall, the tweaks to him may be enough to allow others in the role to shine. Kwong's abilities have been enhanced to solidify his role as a durable fighter with good crowd control abilities. Increases in damage across his kit, particularly in his ultimate Fury of the Heavens, coupled with higher scaling on his Light of the Heavens, improve his ability to initiate and sustain in fights. While Kwong seemed to lose a little bit of favor in the last patch, these buffs across the board will let Kwong rise to power once again, both in the offlane and in the jungle as well. Severog's kit enhancements focus on his role as a tank and a damage dealer. His primary, Siphon, and ultimate, Colossal Blow, now deal more damage with increased scaling that enables him to be more impactful in both initiating fights and securing kills. These buffs, in addition to the increased health from his passive, Reaper of Souls, should allow Sev to turn into the unkillable late game monster a little bit quicker and provide him with more of a backbone for his team as a whole. Next up is Shinbi, who received a ton of balance changes on her abilities. These adjustments aim to improve her sustainability and damage output in skirmishes, increase base damage and shielding on circle rhythm, along with enhanced damage on rushing beat, allow her to be more aggressive in engagements while maintaining her survivability. In addition, the higher base damage but lower scaling on line tempo will keep her more in line toward the late game where she can become a monster. These buffs and overall damage increase on her ultimate are bringing Shinbi into a greater position this patch. Steel's adjustments focus on enhancing his defensive capabilities and engagement impact. His shield slam and bull rush abilities have increased base damage, improving his crowd control and area denial, while his passive battering barrier now provides a more substantial shielding underscoring his role as a frontline protector. Even with these buffs, the nerfs to steal ultimate cooldown and mana costs in the late game may help balance out what seems to be one of the most oppressive heroes to play against. Overall, I think Steel has been tweaked into a better spot than before, but time will tell. Zarus' abilities have been adjusted to enhance his damage output and control in teamfights. His primary, Barricade, and alternate, Spear of Nier, now deal more damage with adjusted cooldowns to allow for more frequent use late game supporting his role as a versatile fighter capable of both engaging enemies and defending allies. All in all, these changes do make me a little nervous, as Zarus was already becoming a powerhouse in both the offlane and the jungle, and I think these buffs will only push him further into that category. Offlane sees Zarus jump two whole tiers from A into the OP tier with his buffs. In addition, Feng Mao moves up to S, while Crunch, Shinbi, and Severog all move up a tier as well. And while Steel did receive some late game nerfs, the traffic cone of my nightmares will still remain in the OP tier this patch. If you made it this far, thank you so much. And while that finishes my initial tier list for patch 0.18, and I think it's a solid start, I believe it'll change quite a bit as people get more comfortable with the new items and the balance changes. Let me know your predictions in the comments below about who belongs in which tiers, and let me know if you'd like to see another tier list for Brawl Mode specifically. Also, keep an eye out for upcoming skin spotlights for Bellica, Aurora, and Howitzer. Until then, I will see you next time.